hi friends so now we are going to see one more method which is used in multi degree of freedom problems that is the hozer method this method is approximation method which is used to determine the natural frequency of the system now how to use this hozer method that we'll see so for that what i am going to consider consider a multi degree of freedom system so for that i'll consider the three masses because normally when there is one mass one displacement it is one degree of freedom system two masses two displacement then it is two degree of freedom system and if the number of displacements are more than two then it becomes the multi degree of freedom system so i have considered three mass spring system where the mass one is m1 and it is connected to spring k1 having displacement x1 then the mass two with displacement x2 connected to spring k1 and k2 on both sides and mass three which is connected to spring k2 having displacement x3 now <coughs> for this system if i want to derive the formula for the holzer's method then we'll have to draw the fbd of this system then fbd of this system will become we have three masses so we'll show the forces on three, ma three masses okay so just see this is the mass 1 mass 2 then mass 3 now the displacement is in downward direction the inertia force will act in upward direction so here i'll mention the inertia force what is the inertia force m x double dot but here the mass is m1 and its displacement is x1 so m1 x1 double dot because this is having x1 displacement downward here we have x2 displacement downward so it inertia force will be m2 x2 double dot and here the inertia force will be m3 x3 double dot now we have finished with the inertia force which is opposite to the displacement now consider the spring force see if i consider x2 is greater than x1 then ultimately the spring will be elongated so when i consider this x2 greater than x1 for the spring then there is elongation of the spring means the displacement will be in this direction so there is elongation and the force which is acting on the spring will be in the opposite direction to displacement so if the displacement is upward then the force will be downward here at the other end displacement is downward so force will be upward okay so these are the forces similarly if i consider x3 greater than x2 then i'll get the force in this direction now what will be the amount of force here the stiffness is k1 into the displacement is x2 minus x1 here the stiffness is k2 and the displacement is x3 minus x2 and the spring force is kx so k1 x2 minus x1 k2 x3 minus x2 so this is the fbd now from this fbd we are going to write the equations okay so for equilibrium condition for equilibrium condition the force acting on mass 1 will be equal to 0 force acting on mass 2 will be equal to 0 and force acting on mass 3 will be equal to 0 so first consider mass 1 and for mass 1 the summation of all the forces will be equal to 0 now write down write down the forces i am going to consider the inertia force positive so upward force positive so this equation will become m1 x1 double dot then minus k1 x2 minus x1 that is equal to 0 we have only two forces for this mass so m1 x1 double dot minus k1 x2 minus x1 will equal to 0 now multiply by this k1 inside the bracket so m1 x1 double dot minus k1 x2 minus minus plus k1 x1 will be equal to 0 okay now for the holzer method 
I am going to make one change. This is the differential equation, but I'll keep only inertia force in one side. So m1 x1 double dot will be equal to will be equal to k1 x2 minus k1 x1. Okay. So I return in the form of inertia force. This equation, this equation, both the equations are same. I'll mention this equation as one. Similarly, write for mass two. So I'll write here for mass two. Now, when I write for mass two, then consider this mass two. So inertia force m two x two double dot. Then the upward force is positive. So plus k one x two minus x one. Then this downward force minus k two x three minus x two. And that will be equal to zero. Okay, that will be equal to zero. Now, here again we'll multiply by k inside. So m two x two double dot plus k one x two minus k one x one minus k two x three minus minus plus k two x two will be equal to zero. Now, whatever the terms which are common, just take these terms common. So, k1, x2, uh, here k1, x1, k2, k2. So, we don't have any term common here. Just we'll transfer all these terms on the other side. So, inertia force m2, x2, double dot will be equal to. Uh, we'll write first this minus term minus will become plus. So, plus k1, x1. Then minus k1 x2, then plus k2 x3, then minus k2 x2. Okay, so we have transferred all these four terms on the other side. So minus will become plus, and plus will become minus. So this will be the equation number two. Similarly, here I'll write for mass three. So for mass three, just see from this mass three, m3. X3 double dot will be sorry, uh, it is upward, so the K2 term will be positive plus K2 X3 minus X2 will be equal to zero. We have only two forces in the mass three. Now multiply by K2 inside, so M3 X3 double dot plus K2 X3 minus K2 X2 will be equal to zero. Now Transfer these two terms on the other side. So m3 x3 double dot will be equal to k2 x2 minus k2 x3. This is the equation number three. Now we have three differential equations from the F B. And if I take the solution, then solution of these differential equations we have three equations so we'll get the three solutions so x1 will be x1 sin omega t that we have seen in topic 1 and 2 so as the vibration is with shm so i have written the equation of shm similarly i can write x2 will be equal to x2 sin omega t and similarly we can write for x3 it will be x3 Sine omega t. Okay. Now, in each equation, we have x two double dot, x one double dot. So we'll have to differentiate this equation two times. So this equation will become x one dot will be is dx by dt differentiate with respect to time. So dx by dt will be equal to x one amplitude is constant. Differentiation of sine is cos, and differentiation of omega t is omega. Similarly, I can write for x two dot will be equal to X2 omega cos omega t for X3 this X3 dot is equal to X3 omega cos omega t. Okay, so these are the velocities of the solution. Now find out acceleration. Then X1 double dot means differentiate one more time with respect to time. So d2x by dt square will be equal to X1 omega differentiation of cos is minus Sine and differentiation of omega is one more omega. 
so this differentiation will become minus x1 omega square sin omega t similarly right here x2 double dot will be equal to minus x2 omega square sin omega t similarly right here x3 double dot will be equal to minus x3 omega square sin omega t now we have the solutions now see now what i am going to do i am going to add equation 1 equation 2 and equation 3 for the holzer method okay so add equation 1 2 3 so here i'll write adding equation 1 2 and 3 now what is the use of this solution this solution will put at the last okay so first we'll make the addition so addition of left side will be it will be m1 x1 double dot plus m2 x2 double dot plus m3 x3 double dot so addition of left side first here second and here third now on the right side we will have to add all these equations so first i will write for the equation 1 so this value is k1 x2 minus k1 x1 now add the equation 2 so i am going to write for 2 just see here equation 2 we have the value so plus k1 x1 minus k1 x2 plus k2 x3 minus k2 x2 now add for 3 plus k2 x2 minus k2 x3 so i have written equation 1 equation 2 and equation 3 which is the right side of each equation now this term will be this term uh, we will talk about the, this term later first here we will see the right side just see the right side this k1 x1 minus and k1 x1 plus will be cancelled so this will be cancelled then this minus k1 x2 and plus k1 x2 will be cancelled then minus k2 x3 and plus k2 x3 these two terms will be cancelled and this k2 x2 and k2 x2 will be cancelled plus minus so the right side of all the terms will become zero and on the left side we have summation of m x double dot m x double dot m x double dot so here i will put the value of x double dot so this will equation will become m1 what is the value of x1 double dot it is minus x1 omega square sin omega t plus m2 in bracket minus x2 omega square sin omega t plus the third one is m3 minus x3 omega square sin omega t and the right side is 0. Now from these three terms just see the sin omega t and minus is common. So minus sin omega t I will take common. So in bracket it will be remained m1 x1 omega square plus m2 x2 omega square plus m3 x3 omega square. We have taken minus sin omega t common. Okay. And the right side is 0. Now transfer this minus sin omega t here. So 0 divided by minus sin will be equal to 0 and here we will remain with this bracket m1 omega square x1 plus m2 omega square x2 plus m3 omega square x3 ok now see this is the summation this is the summation of what is the summation m omega square x will be equal to 0 so this is the formula for Holzer method means in the Holzer method what we are going to do we know the value of m we will have to consider the displacement and by taking any omega value if I calculate all the terms means m omega square x and if that summation is 0 means the omega value that we have taken will be its natural frequency means to determine the natural frequency we will have to make summation m omega square x will be equal to 0 and this is the 
सिंपल डेरिवेशन ऑफ दिस होल्जर्स मेथड सी आई विल रिपीट क्विकली रिवाइज वी हैव टेकन द थ्री मासेस थ्री डिस्प्लेसमेंट टू स्प्रिंग्स आई हैव ड्रॉन द एफ बी डी फ्रॉम द एफ बी डी आई हैव रिटर्न द इक्वेशन फॉर मास वन मास टू मास थ्री विच इज द इक्विलिब्रियम कंडीशन सो फोर्सेस ऑन दैट मास विल बी इक्वल टू जीरो सो फ्रॉम दैट आई हैव सेपरेटेड द एक्सलरेटिंग फोर्स दैट इज एम वन एक्स वन डबल डॉट एम टू एक्स टू डबल डॉट एम थ्री एक्स थ्री डबल डॉट एंड आफ्टर थ्री इक्वेशन एड इट्स लेफ्ट साइड एंड इट्स राइट साइड so after adding its left side and right side we will get this summation will be equal to zero and finally i put the solution of this equation here so that that sign term also will get cancelled and finally we will get summation m omega square x will be equal to zero so this is the holzer's method derivation and in the problem we are going to use the same formula that is summation m omega square x will be equal to 0 and we will solve the numericals in the next session thank you